Hi guys. It is a beautiful Monday morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here in my self-isolation chamber out here in Garfield, Texas on this gorgeous Monday morning, April 6, 2020. It's another day in paradise here uh, as the cottonwood tree snows. Oh yes, my name is Sam Mitchell and this is my uh, little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. And <laughs> this is our lead-off Monday morning version of the Corona, Vi the Corona Panic Chronicles where I just look at various aspects of the Corona Panic, the reaction to all of this and use it as an indicator of how the corona panic is a snapshot of what the collapse of civilization and Mad Max and all the rest is going to look like. Before I dive into uh, just a couple of pleasant announcements, I really want to thank my new patrons here at Collapse Chronicles, Michael and Connie, for their very kind Patreon donation and Integrated Systems for their kind donation to my PayPal and for anybody who has ever donated to this channel for what I do on YouTube. I really do appreciate it and I have one announcement that I need to make also like a like a damn fool, I am getting ready to sell 1,000 ounces of uh, physical silver. Right around May 1st, I am going to be offering for sale 1,000 ounces of 2000, mint condition 2008 Lady Liberty uh, silver dollars. So if there's anybody out there who cannot find physical silver, uh, I will have a bunch of it. As they say, like a fool, I will be liquidating my buried treasure. So if you have any interest in purchasing any of these silver dollars, uh, don't obviously don't know what the price will be, although it will be cheaper than on eBay is all I can say. Any interest in that, uh, the line is already forming. Uh, just send me an email here at collapsechronicles at gmail.com and just put, you know, the subject line. Want to buy some silver dollars to uh, prepare for Mad Max. Okay, and with those announcements out of the way, just want to touch on a few headlines before we get into our main coronavirus Corona Panic Chronicle by Umer Haik, if that's how you pronounce his name. Okay, <clears throat> how about this one? For anybody who does not understand what Mad Max is going to look like, Pennsylvania man upset over coronavirus shoots his girlfriend before turning gun on himself. Imagine that. Here is an Illinois man shot his wife, then himself, over coronavirus fears. And uh, <clears throat> one executive from the National Domestic Abuse Hotline said she expects to see the intensity and frequency of domestic violence increase with the pandemic as the organization works to manage an increased caseload and new challenges. This pattern reflects other disasters, which also saw upticks in domestic abuse. Experts connect the stresses and loss of control of disasters like the corona panic with increases in abusive behavior. Yes, yeah, so is that is that B after you? Do you have a B in your bonnet? Is it that B was after me like that? 
no, uh, there is no uh, honeybee apocalypse in Garfield, Texas. Anyway, where was I? Experts connect the stresses and loss of control of disasters <clears throat> like the corona panic with increases in abusive behavior. Nine large metropolitan police departments, including Portland and Boston, have already seen more than a 20% increase in domestic violence calls. So you can certainly expect murders and suicides to ramp up uh, here in the lockdown. Okay, <clears throat> we're gonna peek, uh, take a quick peek over to Africa where we see complete collapse of economies ahead as Africa faces the virus. Uh, good Lord, Africa. Can you imagine what Africa is going to look like over the next couple of months? Uh, again, I am going to make the prediction that you will probably, both in India and Africa, you will see more people starve to death as a result of the police state lockdowns of the economy than deaths by the virus itself. That more people will die in Africa and in India uh, from the reaction to the panic. And this is going to be true with, with any other as the Orwellian police state takes full advantage of this. You will see more and more uh, people literally starving to death. And uh, from Africa to the Middle East, looking ahead in the Middle East, when corona panic is over, Middle East chaos will only be worse than it is. Uh, excellent article. Maybe I'll get to one of these in the next couple of days. Uh, just talking about how the corona panic in the Middle East uh, is just setting up, absolutely setting up every possible recipe for Mad Max once the wave of, of deaths is over, again, it's uh, all of the, uh, the economic and police state ramifications of the virus will end up being worse than the virus ever would have been. You know what I'm saying. Uh, anyway, but we're going to come over here to our own country where we're going to hear what I, I've read a c couple of essays from this fellow, Umer, H-A-Q-U-E. I have no idea. Hake. Uh, anyway, I have invited Umer several times to appear on the show. He has never responded to my emails. <clears throat> and what is on, how does Umer Hake read what's going on? in America today. America is committing economic suicide. <clears throat> the American economy is about to die from coronavirus. I, now this was written uh, three days ago, so Umer, <clears throat> if you haven't noticed, the American economy is dead. Uh, the, by the way, the the second offer that I had on my house crashed and burned yesterday as the second buyer <clears throat> uh, looking at his job uh, prospects backed out of. So I have lost two contracts on this house in two weeks. The coronavirus has certainly cost me thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, which is why I'm buying my silver. Okay, take it away, Umer. You are watching an economy begin to die. 
That, my friends, is what economic devastation looks like. <clears throat> Unemployment claims skyrocketed to 7 million last week. That is a number so high, so fast, that there is no parallel in all of recorded history, even remotely. The American economy, as demonstrated in Garfield, Texas, is undergoing the largest shock in history. It is a shock faster, bigger, and more devastating than any war, which is one of many reasons the war metaphor is inadequate. We have literally never experienced such a thing before. Why is the American economy being left to die? There is a typo here. The, the sentence reads, why is the American being left to die? Uh, which was probably a Freudian slip of the, uh, of the keyboard. I assume he meant to say, why is the American economy being left to die, but maybe he really meant to say, why is the American being left to die? Because not nearly enough is being done about it. This shock, this economic shock, is unprecedented in history, and the response needs to be two. Instead, Congress and the Prez passed a stimulus bill that is far, far short of the mark. How much so? In what precise ways? Let's think about it together. Okay. The first reason the economy is dying is that the stimulus is inadequate because it's simply far too little. We're going to do a little math together. Don't get scared. It's math any grade schooler can handle. How large is the U.S. economy? It's $20 per year. Of that, about 99% of the number of firms are small businesses. How large is the portion of the stimulus outlined to support businesses, especially small ones, you know, making up 99% of the economy? $500 billion. Are you seeing a problem here yet? You should. That's about just two and a half percent of the economy over a year, which means this. The portion of the stimulus meant to support businesses is enough to keep the economy going for just one week. Sure, we can adjust those numbers up and down. If I assume the 80% that 80% of the economy is business, not 100%, then the stimulus is enough to keep the economy going for two weeks. You see the problem, perhaps? Think about that for a second. Just one week of support amidst the greatest crisis since the last world war. What the? Doop. <clears throat> This shock is historic precisely because it is going to cause the economy to shut down as in waves of business to literally shutter their doors as people stay at home for far, far longer than a week. It's already been a week it's going to be months until any semblance of normality is resumed, but by then it will be too late because this stimulus only supports the economy for a week. Most of it will be dead. Yes, really. That brings me to the second reason the stimulus is short of the mark. This stimulus is not quick, large, or simple enough to buoy confidence. And so people are beginning to 
panic. Ah! <clears throat> Even if I want to get what little support is being offered, say as a small business owner, how do I begin? Where do I turn? Even I myself can scarcely figure out the answer, and I've poured over the various documents. It is a tangle of red, of red tape, a bureaucratic mess. That might not sound like a big deal, but it is. Why? The economist Keynes pointed out about a century ago that the key to staving off depressions is confidence. If I believe that things will be okay, and you do too, then maybe we won't hoard our money and lay off our employees and so forth, and the vicious spiral of depression won't result. But if I cannot figure out how to access even what little support there is, then I will lose confidence fast. The vicious cycle will set in all the sooner. That is precisely what we see happening. Why have 10 million people filed for unemployment in just two weeks? Because there is not enough support to keep this economy going and because what little there is is not producing a feeling of confidence. Instead, because it's a maze and a mess, people are fast losing confidence in institutions and systems. Employers are laying people off even if they don't have to because they can't figure out how not to have to. Meanwhile, the media is touting a $1,200 check to every American. <clears throat> the truth is very different. That $1,200 has all kinds of tests attached to it. If you make this much as a single person, that much as a married couple, and so on, it is true that 90% of people will see something, but most people will not see nearly enough. Let's do the same calculation we did for businesses for people. The economy is $20 trillion. The U.S. has 127 million households, give or take, divided equally that produces income per household of about $150,000, yes, uh, but of course Americans are not nearly that rich. Medium income, you know, for a, a family of four is about 60000 because the rich skim a full half of the economy right off the top. 60000 $60,000, I would love, I mean, I, the, the very thought of uh, being a single person of making $30,000, uh, yeah, right, anyway, but uh, <clears throat> running his numbers, $60,000 is about $1,100 a week. That means the much vaunted stimulus check equals about just one week's worth of the average person's income. Yeah, I, I wish my, uh, my average income was $1,100 a week. And I think that's the average two-person income, although I'm not sure. <clears throat> Do you see the weird parallel here? The stimulus is so small it supports businesses for just one week. And exactly the same is true for people. It supports the average person for just one week also. Just one week. It's already been more than a week. That brings me to the third reason this stimulus is inadequate. What good is it supporting people and businesses for just one week with all kinds of strings attached, 
when the crisis will last months. That money won't be paid out for several more weeks, perhaps months in many cases, and the conditions attached to it make it a sum that is almost meaningless for many people. Are you seeing the problem again? Timing and conditionality, what absurdly little support there is, will arrive far, far too late. Too late for what? Not just too late to pay the bills, we can all see that coming, too late to prevent panic, which is the key to averting any depression. And who knows how to get it all, how much will you get, whether or not you'll need to hire a lawyer to see any funds at all, who to even apply to, because the design of this stimulus <clears throat> is so obscure, keeping everyone in the dark, there is no real feeling of reassurance or confidence gently lifting up the economy. Hence, people are beginning to panic. That is why 10 million people have filed for unemployment in the last two weeks alone. <clears throat> now, let's think of unbelievably destructive Let's think of how unbelievably destructive that really is. <clears throat> how much is 10 million people anyway? The U.S. labor force is about 164 million people. 10 million is already 6% of that. That might not sound like a lot, but it is. It's about 3% a week. If that trend continues, it'll be 12% in a month, 24% in two months. That's a quarter of the economy filing for unemployment in a matter of weeks. That's 50% in four months. How long do you think coronavirus will last? Two months? Three months? Four months? Coronavirus is an extinction level event for modern economies. That is why all this, my friends, is an event the likes of which the modern world has never seen before. Not even in war, natural calamity, or financial crisis because when a society reaches even about 25% or so of sudden, irreversible, long-term, hardcore unemployment, the economy is more or less finished. It cannot recover for generations. That number means that huge numbers of businesses are shuttered, Jobs are destroyed, never to come back. Incomes vanished. Savings gone. Homes foreclosed on. It is the end of families, relationships, stability, hope. Can you say more and more people shooting their partner and then killing themselves that we uh, mentioned here? It is usually the end of democracy also as people turn to a strong man in their rage and discontent and despair. What he's talking about here is how panicked people cheer on a police state, which is exactly what we are seeing as people in panic cheer on the Orwellian police state. Economic ruin is the end of a gentle, modern, wise culture, society, and politics in this way, the root of all ruin. 
all that collapse is now very much in America's near future, not next year, but this, this summer, because the response to coronavirus has been profoundly inadequate. You can see it in everyday life. Doctors fashioning masks from pizza boxes, the dying sharing ventilators, all of this reflects the simple fact the American government did not do nearly enough about the greatest economic shock in modern history. It barely did anything at all. In the end, when they write the books, I am confident they will say this. The American government supported its people and businesses for one week just one week. Amidst an epic, historic crisis, which was to last months. As a result, the economy seized up and died like a coronavirus patient who could not breathe anymore but did not have a ventilator either. And it, it goes on and on here, guys, uh, and then he gets a little carried away in his solutions. So you can go on the link and find out what Umer Haik thinks is the solution. <laughs> I, uh, I won't insult uh, my intelligence or yours, but if you want to, I honestly don't know if he's joking uh, with Umer's solution. Uh, but he closes with, I will see you in the bread lines, brother. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, but I need to uh, wrap up today's edition of the Coronavirus Chronicles. I have already posted the Collapse Chronicle uh, from biologist Christine Mattis. You can already find that here on Humpty, <coughs> on, uh, <coughs> on Collapse Chronicles. Good Lord, will I ever learn? Uh, but I have to, before I get myself in any more trouble than I just did, I need to uh, go, uh, go find a shovel and start digging up buried treasure. Uh, so if anybody wants to uh, buy some of my buried treasure uh, to get through this, uh, once again, email me at collapsechronicles at gmail.com and I will put you on the list. Uh, anyway, if you enjoyed what Umer had to say to you, please spend a few seconds to upload this video and uh, by all means do uh, subscribe to Collapse slash Coronavirus Chronicles while you are over here. Man, what a beautiful day to be sitting in social isolation in Garfield, Texas. Bye guys.